Hi, this is Dr. Kwan. In this video, I'm going to share with you on um, how we could do project valuation or capital budgeting using the modified internal rate of return or in short MIRR. Even though the internal rate of return IRR is more popular in capital budgeting valuation, however, it does come with some issues especially when the project has more than one change in the sign of cash flows um, or in other words, non-conventional cash flows. In such cases, the IRR would produce more than uh, one number, causing uncertainty and confusion or there's no real solution. Therefore, MIRR or Modified Internal Rate of Return comes in handy, especially dealing with non-conventional um, cash flows. There are three uh, major approaches when it comes to computation of um, MIRR. The first one is discounting approach, second one is reinvestment approach, and the third is combination approaches. So um, for the first one in discounting approach, um, this is whereby all negative cash flows are discounted back to the present at the required return and then added to the initial cost. For the investment approach, all cash flows, positive and negative, except for the first one, are compounded out to the end of the project's life and then the IRR is calculated. As for combination approach, all negative cash flows are discounted back to the present and all positive cash flows are compounded out to the end of the project life. Or in other words, combination approach is the combination of this discounting and reinvestment approach. I believe at this stage, it's going to be very difficult to visualize what's going on with each of the approach. So let's take a look at one of the examples so that we can have a better picture of how these approaches work. For example, we assume that there's a company evaluating a project with the following cash flows. So all the details are listed clearly on this table. So um, starting from uh, today, the present time, time zero up to time five. So they will have um, each of the cash flows. For time zero, there will be negative or in other words, cash outflow of 47,000. But unlike a typical conventional cash flows, in year five, in this point, we can see that there's another outflow. So this is the uh, example of what we call the non-conventional cash flows. When dealing with non-conventional cash flow, um, it would be more challenging, especially for uh, computation of IRR. So if let's say we were to go ahead with IRR computation, you will not be able to find a solution. Or in other words, it will actually produce uh, multiple IRRs, which is not useful at all. So apart from this information, uh, the company uses discount rate of 10%. Um, and um, in this case, uh, since it is non-conventional cash flow, it would be better to use MIRR instead using all three methods as mentioned earlier. But before we start, um, it's very important for me, I personally prefer to have everything depicted in um, a timeline uh, so that it's easier to look at. So um, in this case, the timeline would be um, will last for five years. So um, can have a look. So five years. So you can just draw a simple timeline. Okay. Um, so zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So at point zero, we can see that um is negative forty seven thousand. So this is just for illustration. And uh, what happened in time one? Okay, time one, uh, we would have inflow of 16,900. In year two, we would have um, 20,300. In year three, we have um, 25,800. And year four uh, would be 19,600. And as you can see, uh, as mentioned earlier, there's another outflow uh, at 0.5. 9,500. So apart from that, we have information like um, R, discount rate, which is 10%. And the question is actually asking us to find, um, to calculate what would be the MIRR in that case. So before we go into the three approaches, 
Um, MIRR approach is very similar to internal rate of return, except that we do some adjustment or we modify a little bit. Um, the whole point is that we want to tackle this problem. Um, all these three approaches is trying to um, try to solve the issues of um, non-conventional cash flow. So how are we going to deal with this portion, this um, additional negative cash flow at, um, in this case, fifth year? Let's take a look at the first approach called discounting approach. So according to this approach, all negative cash flows are discounted back to the present at the required return and added to the initial cost. So um, the negative uh, cash flow, as you can see over here, this one, so um, over here, is actually represented by here, the negative uh, cash flows discounted back to the present, which is this point, okay, and added to the initial cost. So this is the initial cost. So mean to say, in other words, um, from the diagram, from the timeline, we know that we are going to discount this 9,500 back to this point, and now we are going to add together with this and this would be the new um, CF0, or in other words, the initial investment. So to find this uh, present value for ni uh, negative 9,500, so we can use um, our equation uh, by looking at present value Fv equals to Fv over 1 plus r power of n, or you can use uh, the financial table, so Fv times uh, the present value interest factor. So in this case, maybe we can just use this equation, so negative 9,500 over 1 plus r, um, so in this case would be 1.1, power of n which is 5. So if we were to calculate it, you should be able to get negative um, 5898.75. So um, if we add these two up together, the new uh, initial investment cash flow at time 0 will be negative 5298.75. So what you can see on the screen right now is that after adjustment, you will see that there's some changes in our existing timeline. So instead of 47,000 just now, now we have a new initial investment. But um, you, if you can see that um, now at 0.5, there will be zero because we have discounted the ni negative 9,500 from fifth year to here and add them up. So from the table, it will look something like this. And from the diagram, it will look something like this. So instead of dealing with non-conventional cash flows, now we are dealing with conventional cash flows. So in that case, um, there shouldn't be a problem solving the IRR. So um, if let's say we were to put that in equation, um, it will look something like this. So if you can still recall the internal rate of return or IRR um, is where NPV equals to zero. So if we put it in the formula, this is how it looks like. So um, so we just reformat, uh, just uh, reposition it, then you can solve accordingly. But as you can see, as usual, IRR would uh, be a little bit tedious if you are using manual calculation like this. Um, so, and uh, because we are dealing with um, the mixed string patterns, so it would be challenging if, let's say, we were to do uh, the manual way. But you can try uh, by using the try and error, but, uh, or better, if, let's say, um, we can use the financial calculator or you can use spreadsheet. Apart from using the try and error method, um, or in other words, manually, you can actually try uh, solving MRR using uh, the Excel or Google Sheet. So, uh, like for this one, um, for this counting approach, we can just copy um, uh, the modified cash flows that we have just done. So, from here, it's very simple. You can use the IRR function in this case. So, um, IRR, then just highlight everything over here then just enter. And the answer in this case would be 19.68. The second MIRR approach is what we call the reinvestment approach. So what happened here is that um, according to this approach is that all cash flows, positive and negative, except the first one, are compounded to the end of the project's life. And from that, only we calculate IRR. It's quite similar to the first approach, except that um, instead of um, adjusting from this point, uh, from fifth point, bring to here. But for reinvestment is that we bring all this 
um, negative, uh, positive or negative uh, cash flows to the end of the project, except for the first one. So if we put it in the diagram, it will look something like this. So I mean to say we still keep this. So this is going to be unchanged, 47. But what happened here is that all others would be moved uh, to this point. Or in other words, like um, 16,900, uh, 20, uh, 20,300, 25,800, and this one. 19,600, everything would be compounded um, to the fifth year. Okay, so in other words, uh, we are actually finding the future value of all these cash flows at this point. In this case, at the end of project, in this case, would be point number five. So the logic behind this is that by doing that, it will offset this negative uh, figure over here. So by the end of the day, if you plus all of them, sum it up, it will be offset uh, for this. So you will end up with um, only one outflow and one inflow in fifth year. In order to find how much it would be on the fifth year, so we can just uh, find the future value for each of these cash flows. Or in other words, this is mixed stream. So since that is mixed stream, uh, in order to find future value, we can use back our uh, usual equation, fb equals to pb times 1 plus r power of n, or you can use the financial table pv times with fvif. So uh, for me, I would prefer to work it on a table if let's say we opt for manual way. Um, but do take note that year and n is different. Like for instance, when we are working with um, 16, uh, at time 1, 16,900, uh, the n would be in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4. Like for instance, the last one, negative 9,500, um, that would be 0. So yeah. And from there, we can just calculate um, times it one by one and sum it up. And year five, you should have um, 95,040.59. So after modification, our new timeline shall look like this. So as you can notice, right, we are no longer dealing with non-conventional cash flow like um, the first approach just now. But um, it's much simpler if you can see based on reinvestment approach, there's nothing in between because we have moved everything to fifth year. So in this case, uh, we are, if we look carefully, we are actually dealing with um, just like a single amount. So we just go back to the original formation. In this case, uh, it's much much easier because uh, we are dealing with single amount so um, we just fill this in so our cash flow at time zero will be 47,000 and uh, to solve this uh, we just discount it back to 0 0.0 so our future value would be 95040.59 um, then just over uh, 1 plus MIRR uh, power of Five in this case, then just solve for MIRR. So of course, uh, we may have to use. Um, maybe you can just do some adjustment over here. MIRR. So this is uh, just back to should be able to solve accordingly. So we have um, four point five nine then over forty seven thousand. So in order to solve this, then we have to square uh, square root by five for each side then uh, you should be able to get your MIRR in that case, which is um, roughly 15.12%. Last but not least, uh, let's take a look at the third approach, uh, MIR approach called uh, combination approach. So from the name itself, um, it's actually a combination of the first two approach, discounting and compounding. Um, so for combination approach, all negative cash flows are discounted back to the present and all positive cash flows are compounded out to the end of the project's life. So basically they um, manage it by separating uh, the positive and negative cash flows. So what happened here is that like um, all negative, so in this case we can see that um, the negative cash flow in fifth year over here. So if we find this, it will be discounted to the present, or in other words, it will be discounted to 0, 0.0, so to the present. As for all these um, positive uh, cash flows, as, as you can see over here, 
it shall be compounded to this point at the end of the project's life. So it will be compounded one by one. So it's like uh, how you find for your uh, mixed stream future value. Okay. So um, again, if that's the case, then you will be finding that only one outflow by the end of the day. So you will have a new um, initial investment after adjustment and also just one um, outflow over here. So getting the summation of all these future cash flows of all the positive cash flows at 0.5. So to solve um, the, the to get the new initial investment after adjustment, you shall be able to find. Um, so we just discount it. So find present value um, by using this formula. So um, the future value in this case would be uh, negative nine thousand five hundred over one point one. So power of n, you should be able to get um, negative five eight. 98.71 and uh, again just add this up and you shall be able to get um, again a uh, 52898.75 so once we have found the present value uh, which is 52898.75 just now so next would be finding uh, the, the compound all this positive cash flow to the end of the project so in order to find it um, again uh, is similar to how how we can do for the reinvestment approaches now so we just dis uh, compound each and every one of these cash flows to fifth year so so in this case um, the the future value in year fifth year would be um, this amount, which is 104,540.59. So once we have adjusted and modified accordingly, again, now we are no longer dealing with non-conventional cash flows, but instead we are looking at just like um, the one up here on the screen right now, which is a single amount. So, um, in this case, then our cash flow at time zero will be this amount, and there's nothing in between, and we have fifth year uh, this total. So we can just solve our MIRR accordingly. In this case, it would be 14.6%. And just a quick sharing, MIRR can actually be done easily using spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheet. So um, this is the original, based on the example that we have, this is the original data that we have with that adjustment. Um, uh, as you can see over here, it's non-conventional. So actually we don't, uh, we can just easily do it using Excel. In this case, uh, the Excel formula is actually based on the third approach, which, which is the combination approach. So you can just uh, press equal, M-I-R-R. So just bracket. Then what you need to do is just highlight um, the, the cash flows over here. Then comma, they will actually prompt you to enter the finance rate and investment rate. So basically, um, we will use the same rate as here. Then just comma, then we just click this again and enter. So you will get exactly the same answer like uh, using the combination approach. So you can also get 14.6. This is by using spreadsheet. And we are done. So um, we have gone through and compute uh, MIRR using three different approaches, discounting, reinvestment, and combination. So um, as you can see, all of this MIRR calculated is all greater than 10%, which is the discount rate. Or in other words, the project is acceptable. Although it looks different, uh, based on different approach, we have different results. Uh, we actually consider all of them are correct. So again, MIRR is a better alternative over IRR in handling um, non-conventional cash flows like this. However, um, although it's an improved version of IRR, um, it still um, have a potential problem of ranking mutually exclusive projects. So normally when we are dealing with this, um, it would be uh, preferred to use NPV. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you uh, have a better insight on how to calculate and what um, MIR is from this video. Thank you and have a nice day.